Hey gang, welcome back to another video. A while back I showed you this dental inlay furnace that I picked up on Craigslist. I think I paid around a hundred or hundred and twenty-five dollars for it and it's in mint condition even though it's an older model. You can see the oven cavity or the furnace cavity is excellent condition. It can hold a decent sized crucible and I was told it can go over 2,000 degrees around 2200 by the previous owner that was a dentist that sold his practice and I purchased this unit so I had the ability to melt all kinds of metals including silver and gold. Now the only thing it had wrong with it was this cover was missing so I had to vacuum form a new cover. I have another video showing that. If you haven't seen it you'll see the link posted at the end of this video and this handle wasn't here so I picked up a handle from Home Depot just tightened it on there so what I want to do today is just try this thing out because it's been sitting in storage for a very long time. I want to see if I'm going to be able to melt copper. Now this is a copper half inch male adapter. There's two inside this crucible right here. It's going to take a little while to heat this oven up. It's already on. You can see the temperature is coming up. If I'm able to melt these copper fittings, then I'm going to know for sure that gold should not be a problem because it has a slightly lower melting point than copper and silver is around 220 maybe 250 degrees lower in the Fahrenheit scale to melt which is around 17 and change so right now let me let the oven heat up get it nice and hot and then I'm going to place this inside and let it sit for a while to see if it melts once it reaches the operating temperature of around 2000 to 2200 I'll open the door show you what it looks like on the inside Okay, I'm up to around 1650 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me open the door up. I want to place the crucible inside. You see it's starting to glow. Do this very carefully. Okay, that's in. Okay, let the temperature go back up. Once it gets around 21, 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll leave it there for a while and we'll see if it can melt down that copper. Now if I'm able to melt down that copper, what I'm going to do next is pour it into a bar form right here. And before I pour it in, I'm going to add a little bit of flux, just a small amount. It's like borax mixed with other chemicals to make that metal more flowable. And I'll stir it with this graphite rod. Okay, we're up to around 2175, and the cycle light is still on even though it's hard to see, indicating heating is still taking place. So the copper should be melting on the inside. I'm going to let it sit a few more minutes. Okay, let's open the door and just take a look to see if it's actually melting. Let me hold it with that. It's kind of hot. Yep, it's melting. It was sitting on top, now it fell down. All right, so let's let it sit for a while and really melt down. It's only half melted in there. Now I'm going to open up the door since that melted and add another one of these. And I'm also going to place just a little bit of flux inside this before I place it inside the crucible. So let me open up the door and do that next. Right here you can see the flux inside. Let me hold this here. It's very hot. Very gentle. All right. Very carefully place this inside. All right, it's still melting. Okay, let that sit a little bit. Okay, the temperature's way up there. Oh man, that's really hot. Let's drop one more in. Carefully. Oh, it's molten, baby. Oh, it's, it's melted down all the way. All right, so let that one melt too. And then I'm going to try pouring it into this mold. And hopefully we get a good pour out of it. I didn't see too much oxidation on the surface of that molten copper. And that's a pretty good sign. Hopefully that flux is doing its job. If I see a lot of oxidation on top, I'm going to have to skim some of it off. The only problem I think I might have is that this is cycling on and off right around 2,250 degrees Fahrenheit and that's only about 150 degrees higher than the melting point of the copper. So as soon as I open that door, the odds are 
that molten copper is going to start solidifying very quickly not giving me enough time to pour it and I'm afraid that's what's going to end up happening here so let me open the door and take a peek I'm going to grab these tongs and remove the crucible and try pouring it into the graphite mold very quickly put on my face shield and the graphite mold is right over here to the left I'll change the angle of the camera after I get the crucible out okay let's give it a try and see what happens pour it really fast oh baby Okay, there's the pour, and I'm going to let that cool a minute, and I'm going to dump it in the water. Okay, let's drop that in. Okay, this is what it looks like when it's cooled down. Let me give it a good cleaning, and we'll see how good we can get it to look. And here's a look at the bar after I polish it up with the wire wheel. See the corners, nice and round. And there is some slag on the surface. That's copper oxide that I didn't scoop off. And the only reason why I didn't scoop it off is because of what I said earlier. I just didn't have the time to get the graphite rod in there to wipe it away because the liquid copper would have cooled, making it very difficult for me to pour it. Pretty heavy. Now this is a look at the crucible. Now this is an aluminum oxide crucible and you can see it actually developed cracks. There's a crack there, crack here, and right in this area of cracks you can see the copper poured out, ran to the bottom of the crucible. And over here is where I had the copper fitting resting on top in the furnace. Some of it dripped over the edge. So I don't think I'm going to use this again, even though it's rated 1600 C, and I was only around 1200 or 1225 C. So I'm going to switch to graphite. Graphite seems to be much better, and you don't have the copper sticking to the inside of the crucible, like you can see right here. The bar looks like something you see in a shipwreck from a Spanish galleon, with that stippled front like that. And this is my first time I've ever poured a bar. So as time goes by, I should get better at it, making a much nicer and cleaner surface. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.